Let me read to you a passage from the 20th chapter of St. John's Gospel. It's verses 11 to 18. It's the Gospel for Tuesday, immediately following Easter Sunday, Tuesday of the octave of Easter Sunday. St. John writes, Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. And when she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus there, but did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener, and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. That's from John chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. What thoughts does that Easter passage suggest to us? Well, religion has taken numerous forms in the history of mankind, with its rituals and myths and stories. Now, this is surely one of the very beautiful scenes of the Gospel, and it carries us into the heart of Christianity, reminding us of its essence. Our Gospel scene places us before the tomb of Jesus on the morning of the third day following his death. His disciples are absolutely devastated. They loved him, and all their religious hopes were centered on him. He was the Messiah, and a Messiah far beyond their expectations. Yet all had suddenly come to nothing, for he, the one they so loved and utterly admired, now lay dead in the tomb. He had gone, and this sense of total loss is encapsulated in the weeping figure of Mary Magdalene, who had lovingly accompanied him and the twelve on mission, serving them in various ways she could during our Lord's public ministry. She was one of the women who had followed him in his passion to Calvary, together with his mother Mary and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas. She must have been very close to Mary the mother of the Lord. But look at what happens now. The angels at the tomb speak to Mary and she, and I quote, turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. I like to think that a wonderful smile was on the face of the risen Jesus as he pronounced Mary's name to her, allowing her to recognize him as the same but now risen Jesus. The joy that flooded into her soul was immense, a joy 
which Christ himself had at being once again with his friends and disciples. You know, a favorite cry of Islam is that there is no God but God. Well, Jesus Christ is the one and only God, but to be distinguished from two other divine persons who are also the one and only God, namely the Father and the Holy Spirit. On this occasion of our Gospel text today, our Lord refers to the Father when he tells Mary Magdalene to go to his brothers and tell them the good news. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. Christianity is a religion of mutual love between Christ, who is our God, and his disciples. This holy love that unites Christ and each of his disciples is of the essence of the Christian religion. And in loving Christ, we are immediately taken to the Father in the Holy Spirit. However, while the Christian religion is a matter between Christ and me, as it were, it is not just a matter between Christ and me. It's not just that. Also included are his brothers. We, his brothers, as our Lord puts it in today's Gospel passage, are all in this faith and love for Jesus together. And just as Mary was sent to tell his brothers of the news that the Lord had risen, so his brothers will be sent to the world to make disciples of all the nations. That is to say, the Christian religion involves the church, which is Christ's body. We are all in Christ as a body. We live in him together. We come to Christ in and through his brothers who are his body, the Church. Our life is a life of love for Jesus, who has loved us and died for us, and this life is lived out in union with his brothers who make up the Church. We are called to be loving disciples of Christ, immersed in the Church he founded. Just as we love Christ, we ought love his holy Catholic Church as he did. Let us linger in our Gospel scene today thinking of the joyful love which our Lord showed towards one of his most ardent disciples. That same smile which we may imagine on the face of Christ as he showed himself to Mary Magdalene, he means to show to each of us in our life of faith and to all his brothers. He sends us all on mission in our everyday life to bring the news of his risen person to the world around us.